Hey guys, and welcome to another late night Vlogmas edition of Year of Miyazaki. Uh, basically, I drank way too much coffee late in the day, and I am now up at 10.30 at night filming videos because why waste the time? Today we're going to be talking about the film Arieti, which was originally released in 2010 under the Japanese title Karigurashi no Arieti, or The Borrower Arieti. Now this should clue you in on the fact that this was based on the book the Borrowers by um, Mary Norton, which was a big popular read back when I was a kid, though I'm not sure if people are still reading it to their kids nowadays. And yes, I just said nowadays and realized that made me sound very, very old. I guess you could say this is sort of a Miyazaki project, seeing as he co-wrote it with Keiko Niwa, who was the writer to co-write um, Tales of Earthsea with Miyazaki's son. However, this is actually directed by Hiromasa Yonebayashi, and yes, that is a very difficult name to pronounce correctly. So in case you haven't read the books, the borrowers are a small folk. They are probably about yay big, couple inches tall, um, and they live under the floorboards and in the walls of old homes and borrow things like sugar cubes and tissue paper and needles and thread and basically live off of what they can gather from the humans um, who own these old houses. In the film Arieti, we follow one particular borrower, a young girl named Arieti, who is prepping to go out borrowing with her father for the first time. Her mother's very nervous because borrowing can be a dangerous occupation, seeing as they are very small and have to worry about snakes, rats, birds, the house cat, and of course, most importantly, have to worry about staying out of sight of the house's human occupants. Ariati, of course, is feeling totally fearless. She trusts her father to help keep her safe and is just so very excited to kind of explore the wider world, um, which she has never really been allowed to do before. On the same day when Ariati is prepping to go borrowing for the first time, a boy moves into the house, a boy named Sho or Sean, depending on whether you watch the English dub or the Japanese dub. The house is owned by Sean's aunt and he is going to live with her and her housekeeper Haru temporarily. Now Sean is supposed to be taking it very easy because he has a heart condition which makes him very weak and he's actually supposed to be going into surgery um, very soon after moving into his aunt's home. However, on his very first night, Haru starts telling him stories about the small people who live in the walls of the house and then the unthinkable Thinkable happens, Sean sees Arieti as she's trying to borrow a tissue paper from his nightstand. Arieti and her father rush back to their home and um, end up freaking their mother out with the news that the humans know that there are borrowers in the house and basically that means they have to move. Arieti is understandably upset. This is the only home she's ever known and she feels responsible because she was the one who got her family seen by humans. That was a really terrible sentence, but you guys understand what I'm saying. She goes to Sean to ask him to forget that they live there and just to leave her family alone and let them be in peace. But as it turns out, the threat to her family really isn't Sean, but is Haru the housekeeper who is obsessed with finding the little people from the stories that she's always been told. In my last year of Miyazaki video, I talked about how I didn't find Ponyo as successful a children's film because it didn't translate well for adults, it kind of stayed at a kid's level. Arieti, on the other hand, I think is a really fantastic example of how Miyazaki can create compelling kids' films that also um, appeal thematically to its adult viewers. Arieti is, of course, at its heart a kid's film. It is based on a classic children's novel and um, is really about adventure, about growing as a young person, and about kind of exploring the world for the first time. However, aside from all of the um, magic and fun of Arieti's very miniature life, uh, you have this darker theme of death, and you have this theme of um, is life worth living if death is ultimately what's going to happen to all of us? I haven't actually read the borrower's book since second or third grade, so in a very, very long time, but I don't believe this is a theme touched on in the book, and I would say it's a really smart addition by the writers because this is kind of what bumps it up to the next level, what makes it accessible for people beyond kind of the generic kids film age group. These themes come up in a couple of different areas in the film, um, most obviously in Sean's heart condition. This is something he's lived with his whole life, and he is very aware of his bodily limitations. 
questions. He actually tells Arietti at one point in the film, um, I'm supposed to go into surgery, but I've heard that this is a bad surgery and I honestly don't know if I'm gonna make it out of there. So Sean is very obviously and very literally facing death, but another place we see this kind of theme of is life worth living is in the apparent extinction of all other borrowers. Aside from Arietti's family, there's only one other borrower you meet, and he is very different from Arietti's family. They are very much um, like a little westernized lifestyle, and he seems to be more of almost like an aboriginal character. Like he lives in the wild, he hunts, and he's he's just from a very different world than they are. But aside from that, Arietti mentions several times that she's never met another borrower. She has heard stories about other borrowers, but she doesn't know if they're actually out there. And Sean's the one who kind of asks the big question, so what if you guys are the only ones left? So the film really brilliantly taps into this fear that I think is super primal and something that everybody can relate to, and then answers it in a really beautiful way. Ultimately, Arietti's answer to Sean's question is that even if there is an end, life is still worth living because we have family, because we have friends, and because we love each other and form genuine connections. For a quick note on the animation, I would say that I don't think this is the most groundbreaking or magical of the Studio Ghibli films, but I love the way that the borrower's lifestyle is animated. I love the ingenuity of their kind of DIY lifestyle, um, how they have everything miniaturized. To me, that's kind of the most magical part of it, is like imagining this smaller world within our world that most humans aren't even aware of. So those are my thoughts on the Studio Ghibli film. Arietti, and I would of course love to know what you guys think of it if you have watched it recently. The next film I will be talking about is another film by Goro Miyazaki, and that is from Up on Poppy Hill. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that, but until then, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you're enjoying Vlogmas so far, and I will see you next time. Bye!